Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about project evaluation. Now when we first say project evaluation, there are two most essential things that come to our mind. Project and evaluation. The term project is a piece of work intending for a purpose, whereas evaluation is an assessment. Therefore, project evaluation process uses systematic analysis to gather data and reveal effectiveness and efficiency of your management. This project has been into existence for a very long time now. It often helps in keeping the projects on track and helps the stakeholders in terms of informing about the progress. At the same time, the evaluation often takes place at various levels. Therefore, it becomes extremely essential to pre-evaluate a project before it is pitched to the stakeholders. It is because if the project is not pre-evaluated, then planning, staffing and controlling cannot be effectively executed. For this, we have three types of project evaluation process. The first is the pre-project evaluation. It is one of the most operative process evaluation way to ensure the effectiveness of the project before executing it. Ongoing evaluation, which is the second type of project evaluation process, keeps a track of project proceeding as planned and hitting all the scheduling and budgeting milestones set. It's crucial to constantly monitor and report on the work in real time. Project metrics are used to ensure that the project is going as per the objectives and goals. And the third is project evaluation. As the name suggests, after the implementation of the project, one has to go through the relevant data and paperwork to check if the project is as per the objectives and the goals that were fixed previously. Otherwise, we need to again reevaluate and come up with a new project. Developing a clear picture regarding this will help in overcoming the drawbacks in the future projects. Given this background, in the video, we would be precisely talking about two important techniques which are usually adopted for project evaluation. Before we focus on these techniques, it is essential for us to be aware of certain keywords. The first is the cost-benefit analysis. As the name suggests, it's a method for organizing information to aid decision makers in the allocation of scarce resources. The technique provides a qualitative comparison of alternative options. First part, the financial CBA or the financial cost-benefit analysis focuses on the efficiency of private investment and the net return of private groups and individuals. Whereas the economic cost-benefit analysis is a wider evaluator, which measures the social value of the society as a whole. It can usually be applied in public investments, but more importantly, it highlights the pro public projects as the investments in those projects do not usually generate net income, but a social benefit at a larger picture. For instance, when you build a dam that provides electricity, we do not usually consider the profit that comes out of it, but we uh, consider that electricity should be reached to every village and town possible around that dam. Now, when we talk about certain concepts, they are divided into two parts. First are the constant factors, which do not consider the time value of money and the second are the factors which consider the time value of money. We would first be focusing on the constant factors. The first constant factor is the sum cost. It is the cost which cannot be recovered. For instance, going to our previous example, when we build a dam, say 5 tons of cement is ordered but only 4.75 tons is actually used in building the dam. But now we have 0.25 tons of cement which is not used and that is where our sunk cost comes under the project. Second is the constraint optimization which is a process of producing an optimal output with the given constraints. Mathematically, they are of three types. First is the linear programming, second is the non-linear programming and third is the multi-object programming. These will help analyze mathematically the costs as well as the benefits a project would give. The third is ROI, which is the ratio of profit expected from an investment project 
and the proposed investment for a project is called the return on investment. The greater the ROI is for a project, the greater is its acceptability. This is further divided into three, that is the return on assets, capital employed and shareholders equity. It doesn't consider, as previously mentioned, the time value of money. The fourth is the payback period. The payback period is another kind of method used for evaluation which focuses on choosing the project that has the least payback. This means the least duration which a project would acquire to fill the cost that has been incurred to formulate the project. Going back to the example of the dam, say suppose if you have to build dam at two places, place A and place B. We see that if the payback period for place A is less than the payback period of place B, that means the cost which we incurred could be recovered in one year for place A and it takes two years to recover the cost from place B, then our essential point would be to build a dam in place A, then B. The fifth is the benefit cost ratio. The benefit cost ratio or the benefit to cost ratio compares the present value of all the benefits with that of the cost and investment of the project. These benefits and costs are treated as monetary cash flows or their equivalents. For example, for non-monetary benefits or company internal costs. Now, benefit to cost ratio, when it is less than one, the present value of benefits in a series of the cash flow is lower than the present value of the corresponding costs. The lower the BCR, the higher is the excess of discounted costs compared to the discounted benefits. When BCR is equals to 1, the present value of the series of the cash flow equals to the likewise discounted costs. This situation is obviously more preferable than the options where the BCR is lower than 1. However, if there is an alternative where the BCR is greater than 1, then they are likely to be favored. Now, these were the constant factors. Coming to the factors which consider the time value of money, we have two more important concepts. First is the NPV, second is the IRR. The NPV or the net present value is the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows over a period of time. NPV is used in capital building and investment planning to analyze the profitability of a projected investment or project. We have NPV greater than zero, then the revenue from the project is greater than its costs. That is, the project is profitable and if the firm accepts the project, then the value of the firm would increase. In other words, if NPV is greater than zero, the project would be accepted. The second is the IRR, which is the internal rate of return is the rate of discount that makes the present value of the expected revenue to be obtained from an investment project equal to the present value of the cost of the project. If the IRR is greater than the rate of the cost of capital, then the investment is concerned project and would be usually in favor. Coming to the third concept, under the IRR, which is the discount rate, is the weighted average or the cost of capital. It is the financial or economic discount rate and the opportunity cost for usage of capital. Higher the discount rate is generally attached to those things which give higher value. For instance, in our dam example, the nearby villages need to be cleared out due to the risk of flooding and so a higher discount rate would be attached to that. Lastly, we come to the second important technique under project evaluation, that is the multi-criteria analysis. This is an alternative to cost-benefit analysis as one of the major limitations of the cost-benefit analysis is that it requires all the values in monetary terms. And in our case, it is practically impossible to convert all the social costs and benefits into monetary values. This is because there is no market to reveal a monetary value. Available technique of valuation 
such as stated or revealed preference methods, are expensive to implement and often provide unreliable valuable estimates. So, the multi-criteria analysis is a structural framework for investigating, analyzing and resolving decision problems constrained by multi-objective criteria. And unlike the CPA, it does not require all impacts to be expressed in monetary units. In its most basic form, the model is comprised of a set of evaluation criteria, a set of weights indicating the importance of these criteria, a set of alternatives which are in terms of scenarios or alternative projects and a set of performance measurements indicating the performance of each alternative against each criteria. This method of analysis is aimed to support decision makers when faced with making numerous and conflicting evaluations. Coming back to the dam example where we know that it is practically impossible to measure in monetary terms the displacement of the nearby villages or the lands in order to construct the dam. Moreover, displacing so many people at once also becomes a very tedious process for the government. Therefore, we need to consider the alternatives for electricity in that particular town or villages around it. So, we take thermal plants into consideration or other more sustainable methods such as costs of shifting of villages and the worst case scenario of the dam. All of these do not require a monetary value for the evaluation and hence for making this approach superior to cost benefit analysis.